wildlife photographer, I have had the good fortune of photographing several types of wildlife in different habitats. Let me show you some of the images I have clicked. Now, I have a question for you all. Where do you think I took these images? Well, you might be wondering. Maybe a nature sanctuary, a national park, a zoo. Maybe not inside India at all. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. These images were all taken inside my very own backyard, inside my home in New Delhi. How's that possible? And how can you do the same? Well, that's what I'm trying to get into today and show you through this talk. Hi, my name is Aman Sharma and I'm an 18 year old wildlife conservationist, photographer and student. As a climate change activist, I've been fighting for climate change mitigation through reforestation, habitat restoration and rewilding, which means taking a bare patch of land and recreating an entire ecosystem on it. I think it's impossible to win the fight against the climate crisis without having people truly understand the power of the natural resources of our planet. But somehow, in our pursuit for urbanization, we've lost the elemental link between man and nature. Today, I want to bring this to your attention. How can we bring back forest cover to cities? How can we rewild India in the truest sense? one urban jungle at a time. When the lockdown started and life went online, I was pining to be back in the wild. All my trips to the jungle had stopped and I was really missing the peace that came with being close to nature. That's when I had an idea, this sudden urge to do something. If I couldn't go to the forest, I was going to make the forest come to me. I had decided, I wanted to turn any piece of land I had access to into a mini jungle. But wait, you might be wondering, why forests? Well, forests are the best and free carbon capture technology we have today, serving as carbon sinks by capturing carbon from the atmosphere. In fact, neighborhoods placed near tree cover are statistically cooler than those with little to no forest cover. So I did some research and came across the Miyawaki method, a way of utilizing land and space and turning it into a forest by growing trees of different heights and creating a multi-layer jungle. I wasn't sure how, but some of the questions that came to my mind were, will it survive in such little space? Can I truly create a forest all by myself? And finally, am I equipped to do it? Well, first, you must find a space. For me, the perfect place was my terrace of 18 years that had remained empty for so long. Second, you must decide and choose the trees you want to plant. Think of every tree as a living, breathing individual. They all have different needs, a different amount of sunlight, watering, kinds of soil, and space needed for them to grow and thrive. After reading up and talking to fellow naturalists, I made sure to only plant native Indian trees, which are better for the local environment. Having limited space and a small area, the best form of plantation is creating a multi-layered forest, where we have varying sized plants, shrubs, and trees on different levels to utilize space and truly create a dense urban jungle. Third, we attract pollinators, a gardener's best friend. Pollinators are essential to any garden, they disperse the seeds, propagate the plants, and help keep the ecosystem alive. Birds, bees, and butterflies made sure my garden was always bustling. And fourth, make sure you know a bit about the needs of every tree and have some basic information on them so you can make a healthy ecosystem. In a span of just 20 days, we had turned a concrete slab into our own bustling man-made forest in my backyard. We had essentially managed to create an entire ecosystem from with trees ranging from pomegranate, guava, peach, to natives like bear and neem. The bees would pollinate the flowers and collect nectar. The butterflies would lay eggs on the host plants, which would then turn into caterpillars and would attract birds. The birds would eat the fruits and berries and excrete the seeds, which would then themselves germinate into trees, creating a self-sufficient habitat that regenerates over time. Though I live in Delhi, one of the most polluted cities in the world, 
seeing more than 90 species of birds and 15 species of butterflies from my own terrace once I rewilded it, really enforced my belief in the power of rewilding cities. Not only did we have a forest in our backyard, but after 18 years, I could finally wake up every morning to the sound of bird calls, from owls and eagles to barbets and flycatchers. My home was now a sanctuary for urban wildlife. The amount of butterflies and birds in my neighborhood has drastically gone up as well, and so has the air quality and visibility next to my house. So what can you do sitting at home during COVID? Plant a tree? No, I say plant a forest. Imagine this, if every colony or community had their own little mini forest, if even one in 10 neighborhoods made their own urban forest. I want us to bring back our future by not just protesting and raising our voices, but also doing tangible things that help our community. We sometimes tend to underestimate the power of small actions, but big problems often have small solutions that join together to make a bigger picture. Imagine living in a nation encompassed by networks of newfound jungles, purifying the air, capturing heat, sequestering carbon, and helping stop extinction and urban biodiversity loss. Think of your small forest as an investment in Earth's green cover. If this model could be replicated, we could help greenify cities across the planet and reimagine what they look like. We could transform concrete jungles to actual jungles. We're talking pollinator gardens on bus stands, fruit orchards on mall roofs, vertical gardens on high rises, wildlife sanctuaries within cities, just everything and anything imaginable that we can create together. So go out or stay in and make your own forest. No one is too small and no space too small either to make a difference. The power to change the world lies in revolutionizing the way we imagine our climate solutions. Visit the link here to find out more about how you can do what I did in the comfort of your own home. Remember, the most important part of being an activist is the word act. Let's bring the change that we truly want to see.